Good day everyone, I am Apollo Shibila Rante together with my co-reporter Rialo Mauricio. We are discussing about the test formulation which are matching type tests and true or false tests. Matching questions generally involve pairing a set of stems or premises. Example, causes. With a set of responses, example, effects. It is most appropriate when you need to measure the learner's ability to identify the relationship or association between similar items. This type of test is used for simple recall of information. You can find ways to make it applicable or useful in assessing higher level of thinking such as applying and analyzing. So, here are the guidelines in making the matching type test. First, clearly state the directions, the basis for making the stimuli with the responses. Let the student know the basis on which items to be matched, where to write the answers, and whether a response may be used more than once. Directions or instructions should be legibly stated. For example, Column 1 is a list of countries, while Column 2 present the continent where these countries are located. Write the letter of the continent corresponding to the country on the line provided in Column 1. So here, the directions are stated clearly. So the students will not, will not ask teachers about the instruction since it has been directed or straightforward. Second guideline. Ensure that the stimuli are longer and responses are shorter. Keep the two sets of items homogeneous. Example, column 1 may list events and column 2 may list dates. Do not combine events, dates, and names in one column. Also, we have to ensure that the stimuli are longer and responses are shorter so that students will be able to read the series quickly and locate answers rapidly. For example, column 1 are the descriptions of the planet, and column 2 are the different planets. It is easy to identify or match column 1 to column 2, since each sets are easy to analyze or understand, so that students will not be confused at all. Moving on, the third guidelines. For each item, include only topics that are related with one another and share some foundation of information. When constructing answers, try to keep them interconnected by theme and manner of presentation. It is important to connect the items and so students will not complicate matching them. Example, column A represent the country and column B represent country's capital. In this example, the details of basis for matching and the responses options only included related concepts. So here, Philippines matched to Manila, Thailand matched to Bangkok, Malaysia is Kuala Lumpur, and Indonesia for Jakarta. The responses are parallel that provide clues to correct answers. Next is the fourth guideline. Make the response option short homogeneous and arranged in a logical order. And this guideline is somehow similar to the guidelines number two, in which each set or options should be precise, short but precise. For example, in column one is the chemical element, then it should be matched to the chemical symbols. For example, gold is for AU, hydrogen is for H, Iron is Fe, Potassium is Ki, Sodium is Na. Next guidelines. Include response options that are reasonable and realistic and similar in length and grammatic form. For example, match the subject with their course description. We have the study of living things, which is biology. Study of mind and behavior, which is psychology. Study of politics and power, which is political science. Study of record events in the past or history. Study of society is sociology. This is a good example because the response options are constant in terms of their length and grammatical form. The last 
guideline is to provide more response options than the number of stimuli. Example, match the following fractions with their corresponding decimal equivalents. One fourth is equal to 0 0.25. Five fourth is equal to one point twenty five. Seven over twenty five is equal to zero point twenty eight, and nine over ten is equal to nine zero point ninety. This example includes the same number of responses options as that of the stimuli, thus making it more prone to guessing. So, matching questions are best suited for assisting recognition and recall. Although well-crafted matching questions can be used to assess high-order thinking. For example, students might be asked to match with new examples or principles with new applications. Matching questions have several advantages. Because all items have the same set of options, matching questions tend to be quick to write and easy to process for the test takers. They are also efficient to mark Reducing back-end workload. Matching is an essential skill, helping to improve a number of cognitive abilities like visual memory, short-term memory, and pattern recognition. Matching also helps with focus and concentration. Good day everyone, I am Rialo Imarishu. I am going to discuss to you the general guidelines in writing a true or false items. But before we proceed, let us first define what is true or false items. True or false items are used to measure the learner's ability to identify whether a statement or proposition is correct, true, or incorrect, false. It is the common question type and it is widely used in testing for student recall or comprehension. True or false questions are best suited to assessing surface level knowledge but can be crafted to assist higher order thinking skills. Now, there are different variations of true or false items. First is T or F correction or modified true or false question. In this format, the statements are presented and each statement contains a keyword or brief phrase that is underlined. It is not enough that a student correctly identifies statement as being false. To receive credit for a statement labeled false, the student must also supply the correct word or phrase which when used to replace underlined part of the statement, makes the statement a true one. Example, multiple choice test is authentic. The underlined word there is authentic and the students will identify whether it is true or false. And if it is false, the student should supply the correct word or answer. The second one is yes or no variation. In this format, the learners has to choose, choose yes or no rather than true or false. Example, the nucleus of the cell is compared to the human being. So the students will just answer, answer yes or no. The last one is A or B variation. In this format, the learners has to choose A or B rather than true or false. Example, indicate which of the following are traditional or authentic tests by circling A if it is traditional test and B if it is authentic. The students will just select A for traditional or B for authentic. Now let's proceed to the general guidelines in writing a true or false items. First is include statements that are completely true or completely false. As you know, a true or false test is made up by several statements, assessing your knowledge of the objectives. Many statements will appear true because most of the statement is true. However, one word in the statement that makes it false makes the entire statement false. Second, use simple and easy to understand statements. The learners can easily understand if the statements are simple and do not use words that have a broader meaning or confusing words. Third, refrain from using negative, especially double negatives. Double negatives are sometimes confuse, confusing and could result in wrong answers. Not because the learner does not know the answer, but because of how the test items are presented. 
fourth, avoid using absolutes such as always and never. Absolute words such as always and never restrict possibilities and make statement as true 100% all all time. There are also a hand for a false answer. Fifth, express a single idea in each item test. Keep the question short and to the point. Never try to cover multiple ideas or notions with a single true or false questions. The last one is avoid the use of unfamiliar words or vocabulary. Students may have a difficult time understanding the statement, especially if the word has not been discussed in the class. Using unfamiliar words would likely lead for guessing. And that's all for my discussion. Thank you for watching and listening.